important and for us surprising finding was that in the oil group the pregnancy rate resulting in live birth, so we really talk about the pregnancies that matters, was 40% and this was only 29% in the water group. That's a highly statistical significant difference, an absolute difference of 11% uh, and if you calculate it the number needed to treat is 10, that means that if you do 10 HSGs in infertile couples with oil as compared to water you have one additional pregnancy. My hypothesis on the mechanism is that there is a kind of debris in uh, uh, the fallopian tubes, not in all uh, couples, but in some couples with difficulty to conceive. And then if you do this tubal flushing, that debris is washed out, uh, resulting then in the capacity to get pregnant uh, after that. Uh, important to, to notice that the treatment effect we saw persisted over six cycles. So it was not only the first cycle that was better, but every subsequent cycle in the oil group had generated more pregnancies than the water group. I think it's an important finding that I think should lead to a reconsideration of tubal testing in general. And I think if you do tubal testing, then the use of oil contrast uh, should, be, uh, should be the first choice. Uh, the other thing that I think is important to inform couples and women about this finding, uh, alternative treatments are IUI and IVF, and I think it's couples who should potentially decide on what they uh, want. I mean, the advantage of the treatment is that this is a one-time visit to the hospital, it takes little time, costs are about $600, uh, and it all generates after that natural conceptions, resulting in singleton pregnancies mostly, which means that the subsequently pregnancies in our study were relatively uncomplicated. So three important advantages of this strategy as comparing to immediately uh, IVF. And then the other thing is that if this doesn't work after six or eight months, you can always shift to the other treatment. So another important reason to keep on continuing tubal testing is we detected also 3% of the women that had blocked tubes and they should be informed about that and they really are dependent on immediate IVF. In our uh, study I should calculate here of about 200 babies, three were uh, abnormal uh, and they were all in the lipidal group. So we don't have any explanation for that and it were all, all completely different uh, causes. Uh, the numbers here are too low to make a reliable statement so I think what should be done is a follow-up of larger cohorts of women treated and obviously with every medical technology we should be very well informed about the consequences for the offspring. I was surprised by the by the by the strength of the treatment effect. I didn't I didn't I anticipated a difference but not a 10% difference. It was really it's one of those things that, that yeah it's one of those hits potentially that you find something that is bigger than you uh, thought so to say. Thank you.